Hey guys, even here, and we have a lot of exciting news in bodybuilding today. We're gonna start with the most exciting one, and it is Rolly Winkler and Nick Walker both are actually doing Arnold Classic 2021. Great freaking news, guys, right? I mean, this is really exciting. Rolly Winkler and Nick Walker both. So, on their official Instagram page, Arnold Classic, they posted this. So, they say, breaking news. 2021 Arnold Classic just got a lot bigger. And the men's open bodybuilding lineup much deeper. Fan favorite Rolly Winkler and rising star Nick Walker will take the stage when the Arnold Classic returns to Columbus numbers on September 25th. So when we first got the official lineup, the official list of competitors for Arnold Classic, we thought it was absolutely amazing, a lot of big names, it seems like it's gonna be a huge Arnold Classic, a lot of people were actually very excited about that lineup, and there were some speculations that it's not exactly closed list, there are other bodybuilders that might have been invited, but they haven't really responded yet, and now they have responded. So Nick Walker, first of all, he was sort of challenged by Sir Sergio Oliva. After all that uh, trouble with them, with uh, Nick Walker and Fuad Abiyad saying uh, publicly that uh, Sergio is not competing at the Chicago, uh, these two guys got in a lot of trouble. And then basically, what uh, Sergio said is that Nick won the New York Pro because the competition wasn't that hard. Back when Sergio was competing, it was tougher, and this year it was easy for Nick to win. And that he should do Arnold Classic as well to prove, sort of, that he is good. So now it seems like Nick did that because Sergio challenged him. Nick is probably trying to prove that he's better than Sergio. So it's gonna be an interesting rivalry. We're gonna see Nick Walker versus Sergio Oliva. I'm not sure on what kind of terms Nick and Sergio are right now, but I did hear Nick talk about Sergio in a new podcast with Fuad. They were kind of laughing at him let's say, making fun of him, the fact that he said that these guys can't keep a secret or whatever, it didn't really seem like Nick likes Sergio anymore very much, so I don't think they are in good terms, very very good, I also saw the other comments, they were arguing, Nick seemed kind of angry at Sergio, because Sergio said something about Justin should have placed higher, and also he said that the lineup at the New York Pro this year wasn't very very good, it was weak compared to when Sergio competed, so it seems like there was a lot of bad blood between these two guys, it seems like they spoke privately, but I don't think uh, Nick is gonna like Sergio anymore. So this was Sergio's comment here, and I thought... And I was surprised by it, so he says, Sergio says, mad respect for entering, because last time we talked, you weren't, you weren't gonna. It shows a lot about you as a competitor, this is the Arnold the fans deserve. So, uh, Sergio was saying that everybody should do the Arnold Classic, that they should make it fun, that bodybuilders should compete more, but I don't think Nick did that because of what Sergio said. I think he's doing this because, uh, first of all, he got invited, and why would he decline that? Yeah, Mr. Olympia is very important, and it's gonna be happening uh, soon after Arnold Classic, so he probably didn't want to sacrifice his form because he's probably not sure if he can peak twice. Uh, in such a short time span, so maybe he wanted to rest for Mr. Olympia, but now he decided to do it. I'm pretty sure he will pick twice properly, and I think the, the main motivation here is to prove to Sergio that he is better than him. I think Nick is that competitive, and if you ask me, can Nick beat Sergio on that stage? Yes, I absolutely do think so. I think Nick is just much better bodybuilder than Sergio. Sure, maybe not more aesthetic, not even aesthetic at all, but that's not what bodybuilding is all about. It's more about the mass and crazy conditioning and the freak factor, and Nick absolutely has it, and it's really hard to ignore it. So I don't think we're gonna see Nick lose against Sergio. I'm pretty sure Nick is gonna be in like top three at the Arnold Classic. So who's gonna win it? Is it gonna be Rolly? It seems like it. So Rolly has both of those things that I just mentioned. He has the aesthetics and he has a lot of freakiness, a lot of muscle. What he doesn't really have always is conditioning. So that's the big question. But based on what we saw so far recently, he seems to be in a great shape right now and there's still a lot of time before Arnold Classic. So it seems like he's not gonna be doing tempo or any of the other sh smaller shows, because why would he? I think he can win this Arnold Classic. I mean, he does have some serious competition, like William Bonek and the other guys. There are also some some heavy hitters that can take Rolly out, like Cedric McMillan if he's in shape. 
I think Nick Walker is gonna challenge Rolly very, very much so, because when he stepped on that New York Pro stage, he was a clear winner, he was a standout bodybuilder, everybody thought, okay, this is the winner, it's very clear, ever since that show, we haven't seen him compared to the other top guys, we're gonna see that at the Arnold Classic, how well will he do? I'm not saying that he is going to, but you cannot say that there is no way that he can win the Arnold Classic. But again, if I was a batting man, I would bat on my safest bat, and that is Rolly Winkler. So it's gonna be all about conditioning. If Rolly brings the conditioning, yeah, that's it. He's gonna beat everybody. I have no doubts about that, because Rolly is just a different kind of a beast. But uh, now he hasn't been competing in two years. I'm not really sure what to expect of him. He might be a little bit worse, you know. He's like 44 now, so the age is... He's gonna get to him eventually, and it's about the time that it's gonna start happening, probably soon. So, we're gonna see what Rolly do does actually look on the stage, but, like, the safest bet would be Rolly Winkler, because he's definitely that super high caliber of a bodybuilder. He was, like, he almost won the Mr. Olympia. I mean, he was third after Sean and Phil, who are not even competing anymore, basically. So, Rolly Winkler is doing the Arnold Classic. He's gonna be the favorite to win this show. But, you know, he's not exactly known for consistency in conditioning. Nick Walker, however, is. Bonek, I'm not sure what to expect of him, because he is also getting older. Cedric, also a wild card. A lot of wild cards. It's gonna be a very competitive show, that's for sure. And now, with the entrance of these two guys, it's gonna be just that much more competitive and that much more exciting. It's gonna be one of the biggest shows, one of the most competitive shows we have seen in so many years. I'm really excited about this, this is really amazing news, guys. Alright, next, as we are less than 4 weeks out of Chicago Pro, we have a new update of Keon Pearson, of course doing the 212, posted by Dorian Hamilton, his coach, and this is what Keon looks like right now, and I cannot be more impressed, this just looks absolutely insane. I mean, look at the 3D that he has, and look at the fullness combined with conditioning, so he's getting peeled and he still looks super full and super round, so I can't even imagine what is gonna, what this is gonna look like on stage, it's just gonna be probably unstoppable, I don't think he can lose this show, and I don't think he can place uh, outside of top 5 at the Mr. Olympia in 2012, possibly even win the show, can he really win the show, I'm gonna show you uh, an update of the current 212 Mr. Olympia champion in a second, but before that, let's admire Kian's physique for a, little, for a little longer, because this just looks absolutely ridiculous, I mean, there isn't really much to say about this, fullness with this conditioning at less than 4 weeks out, 3.5 weeks out, he still has a lot of time to nail it, as far as uh, being shredded and also coming, you know, perfectly peaked, like, full and shredded and, and hard and everything, so there is, a lot, there is enough time for him to be just spot on for that show, and it's gonna be an easy win, I'm guessing, because look at his photo, I mean, every time he posts something, it's just super amazing, and I have to say, I definitely do agree what everybody is saying, it's that uh, Kian has the best genetics in all the divisions, if you consider classic physique, if you consider bodybuilding open, 212, all the divisions right now, this guy is the most genetically gifted guy of all the bodybuilders that are competing right now, and once he unlocks the full potential, wow, that's gonna be something, that's gonna be amazing. Though I did hear that he said that he's gonna retire at, the, at 30, and I think he's like 25, 26, something like that right now, so it's gonna be enough time for him to unlock the full potential, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, probably not though, maybe once he's on the peak of his career, when he's 30, maybe he decides to do a few more years, if he's like a Mr. Olympia winner and he's earning a lot of money, why would he stop, I don't see that happening, but that's what he said, anyways, in this, in this water right here that you can see, he looks just ridiculous, ridiculous, very, very rare genetics. But the question is, are those genetics simply good enough to beat something like this? The current 212 Mr. Olympia, Sean Clarida, who is right now trained by John Meadows. I don't know if John is actually preparing him, like writing him a diet and all the protocols and everything, or just uh, doing a couple of sessions with him, training sessions. I don't know, but they are taking a lot of photos and videos together. And in this one, Sean looks shredded basically he looks ready for the show i don't know why he's so lean right now his face looks like a dead face as well maybe it's an older photo but i don't think so 
yeah as you can see the description here rx muscle posted this it seems like it's a recent one and i saw the other photos that they both posted uh, john meadows and sean clareda and yeah it seems like it's recent so why is he keeping conditioning so tight so far away from the show i'm not sure maybe he's one of those guys that just can't get fat even if they want to and he just got a little bit watery and now he lost all the water i'm not sure but he was much less conditioned like a week ago or two weeks ago so whatever he's doing he's looking absolutely ridiculous right now shredded detailed everything so we'll see what he's gonna look like on the stage can he repeat his last year's shape i don't know that is really hard to repeat because he was spot on last year he picked absolutely perfectly and it seems like that's gonna be his form that he's gonna chase forever I don't know, maybe that's gonna be his best, maybe it's gonna be worse than this year, maybe this year is gonna surpass last year, I don't know, we'll see, but can Keon beat this? I don't think so, not this year, maybe in a few years, but this year it's gonna be hard, because Sean is very, very complete, he has great legs, great back, everything, he's matured, so it's gonna be tough taking him out, I think he's gonna win this year again, but in a few years, I have no doubts, Keon is gonna be a big, a big problem for Sean Clarida, Will he beat him eventually? We'll see, but it's a different kind of physique. I mean, Sean looks like a freak. Even though he's very short, he does have that freaky look. He doesn't have the aesthetic look like Kian. So it's different, but this is bodybuilding. Aesthetics are not really that much important. So I think Sean is going to be winning another Mr. Olympia this year. Another news as well, and this one is not very good. It's Nicholas, uh, I'm going to pronounce his name properly, Hollywood, whatever. Uh, he's French or... I think he's from Switzerland, I'm not sure, but he speaks French in this video, particularly, and this is a video where he explains what his future plans are, and as you can see, he says, I actually took the decision not to compete anymore. You guys remember these photos? So here, it's very arguable who looks more impressive. In certain poses, Nicholas does, in certain poses, Hadi does. So, for example, in this one, in the side chest, Nicholas looks better. I mean, look at the hamstring sweep right there. The delts, the chest, the width or the shoulders. He looks better. But then again, you take a look at this one, back lat spread. And even though it's not very much distance between these two guys, Hardy does look better. I mean, his legs look bigger. His glutes look more shredded. His back looks just much, much thicker and more complete overall. And here is uh, another pose where Hardy destroys Nicholas. So you can see kind of why... Uh, why Hadi won, that was probably it, the back itself, but again, it was very close. And another factor that definitely helped Hadi was the fact that he was much taller. And Hadi is a very short bodybuilder, he was also, this was 212, guys. And so that means that Nicholas is very, very short. So you might be thinking, if he was almost able to beat Hadi, could he be like top 6 at the Mr. Olympia? I don't think so, I don't think he could because of his height. But for 212, I think he could have won that, that Mr. Olympia because he was so, he is still so genetically blessed, like insane, the craziest muscle belly, it's one of the craziest ever. Now I'm thinking I made a video about the craziest muscle bellies of all time and I forgot to include him because he's one of those guys for sure. But unfortunately he retired and I was wondering also, I was following him and I saw a lot of photos that he was posting. And I thought, when will he come back? When will we see him again on the stage? And now I got my answer. Never, it seems like. Unless he changes his mind, which is something that bodybuilders do very often. They retire, and then they come back next year, <laughs> or something like that. So there is a possibility that he will compete again, but as for now, he decided not to. If you guys want to know why exactly, you can read the caption. It's rather lengthy, but you can read it if you want it. Or you can listen to his video if you speak French and he explains everything, or the reasons why. But what is what is the point here is that he's not going to be competing anymore, as he says. So another bodybuilding news, not very bright one, but bodybuilding news nonetheless. And for the end of this video, we have some YouTube drama, actually. So Kai Green uh, commented on Louis Marco's uh, Instagram post. Which is something that Kai did before, so he said, bro, we need you back, that Nick guy is so boring. And what Nick did, he did not decide to give him clout, as he says, he didn't decide to mention this in his video or something, he actually made a video on his vlog channel and he made this post on his community and he asked us a question, would I be less boring if I told you guys I was doing the Olympia every year but never did it? 
Shots fired! Shots fired! So Nick is not holding back, he's firing back at Kai Green and he's basically calling him out for promising that he's gonna compete and he never does, he's lying to us, he's teasing us and, uh, and I gotta say, both of these guys are right. What Kai is doing, I absolutely hate. I don't like Kai because of that. I do mention him in my videos because he deserves that because of his physique. But as a personality, I absolutely hate his personality. He's not, not a nice person. He is teasing his fans so much. He is saying that he's going to be competing and he never does. He just wants uh, the, the, the traction on his Instagram because when he wants to sell stuff, to earn money. It's just really lame. But he's saying that Nick... Strength and power is boring, and I have to agree with that as well. I mean, I do respect Nick, he created this whole thing, basically. I mean, he perfected it after after Louis Marco, he created this whole uh, cloud, basically, on YouTube, and I'm definitely very much grateful for that, and I took a lot from him, I learned a lot from him, but is he boring as a personality? I mean, I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Let's be realistic. I mean, I'm not hating, I'm just saying the facts. He's a little bit boring. So this is the, the, the fight that we have right now, it's Kai versus Nick's strength and power, and we'll see how far will this go, will Kai actually respond, will he give Nick clout, because also Kai has a lot of followers on his Instagram. So we'll see what's gonna happen next, if something happens I will report it here, so guys stay tuned, subscribe. However Kai did post this, so he <laughs> made a comparison photo of Phil Heath at his last Mr. Olympia and Kai Green right now and he asked Phil actually in the question, in the, in the, in the description he says, uh, hey Philip, you didn't like or comment any of my new photos can you say something so I know you saw them? and Phil actually responded this time but he only commented his socks so he says, those socks are fire bro so he, re <laughs> he responded in that manner but I would definitely be curious to see both of these guys on the stage again just like George Farah right here, uh, Kai's coach, is saying in the comments that will be very very exciting but uh, what is the likelihood of that happening? It's very very slim, very very slim at best. So we'll see what's gonna happen with these two guys and with Nick Strength and Power and Kai and with Arnold Classic, if somebody else jumps in, whatever happens, interesting in bodybuilding world, I will talk about it, I will post it here on my channel, so guys, subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, of course, and thank you very much, all the best guys, and bye-bye.